you, you could actually just run this experiment purely with measurements of volume and time to MP as we've as we've discussed we have so if you have a two can system you you know, you're going to have to run experiments for each can and, and those measurements of volume and time to empty multiple experiments that you'll run allow you to to, to determine K through these model based uh, correlation through this model based correlation you can also add and, and this is what we will do in this lab is you can add direct sensing of either fluid level or volume and um, one of the nice things uh, you know you, you could use those to uh, obviously help you determine K and I'll discuss that shortly but one of the nice things about having this is that it gives you an independent way of, 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 of showing how well your model might compare uh, and to assess the predictions that you make uh, with your model to actual measure, direct measurements, right? So direct sensing, you can you can actually directly measure critical values. If I ask you, find the peak value and at what time it occurs, you can actually look at measured data afterwards and see how well your sim simulation would compare to that. Um, the other thing you could do is, you know, if you have a system, obviously we have these in situ sen sensors, you can obviously either find those K values, you know, during operation, if something changes in the system, maybe you could actually, f you know, update your K values, or you could also, also find out if something goes wrong. Sensors obviously are used for detecting faults and so on in systems. So direct sensing is, is very valuable. Um, we're doing two different things here. We're building a model, but then we're going to use the sensors in this case to sort of check our model, to validate our model. Okay. <clears throat> so Here's a little slide that just demonstrates you. Know, you could have a model simulation here as in a block diagram form showing you can have a single can that simulates very simply the initial volume and how, how it empties. But you could also, in showing kind of a noisy data here as if you measured it, you could kind of be tweaking your K value until your, until your simulation matched with your, with your uh, measured data, right? By, Tweaking your K, kind of the way we do in this pendulum experiment, you could make those uh, make those two, the simulation and measure data, match up. That's one way you could find K. Uh, we won't necessarily do that in this experiment, but you, you could do that if you think about it. Um, other ways, so some of the ways of actually sensing the fluid level or volume. So let's talk about level. You know, there's very there's a lot of different ways you could do a float measure. There's a capacitive sensors or resistive sensors. Actually, this is resistive. This is capacitive. You could measure the resistance of the water here, and and when that water level drops, your resistance changes, and you could infer level from resistance or from capacitance between two probes. We've actually built sensors like this in for the two cans. It's uh, um, something that you can do uh, for uh, uh, for measuring level if you wanted to. Um, pressure, of course, can also be used to infer the height or, or in turn, volume as well, right? We know through this simple kind of quasi-static relation, if we can measure the pressure at the bottom of the can, obviously we can measure height, or because it's related, we can measure volume. And so that's what we'll do. We know what this C value is, what the capacitance is, so by measuring pressure, we can infer or measure volume directly. And this shows an example using this one sensor that we are used, we've used in the lab uh, um, to, uh, to measure uh, pressure at the bottom of these uh, small cans. Uh, the type of pressure that we have is actually has a diaphragm and uh, when the uh, water comes into that diaphragm, it causes a deflection of a, of a sensing element. In this case, for example, you could have a beam that has some strain gauges. We would talk about strain gauges in another lab, but by detecting the strain in those sensors, you can infer a deflection of that diaphragm, and that's related to pressure, and that's how you can get a kind of electromechanical type pressure sensor, right? And so the actual sensor that we buy is off the shelf. It's this sensor from uh, Omega Engineering. And uh, this is actually a really nice sensor because it's it's fairly sensitive. You know, we only have you know about eight inches of water. This is this this sensor here can measure full scale uh, range of the sensors, uh, ten inches of water. It'll give you uh, full scale output. In this case, five volts out. So it's it's fairly sensitive. So you can actually overrange these very simply if you're not careful. Uh, although it has a pretty good overrange protection, but uh, we're not putting really high pressures on here, obviously. Uh, the way this sensor works uh, is it, it's actually uh, 
what's called a microelectromechanical type. It's a MEMS type sensor. It's got silicon based beams in here that, um, or diaphragm rather, that has some strain gauges actually embedded right on into the silicon. And so you, you, you actually infer that. When we talk about strain gauges in, in, in another lab, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll show you how these can be configured to uh, detect strain. We're not measuring strain directly, we're just inferring pressure from that change in strain. So here's how those sensors are used in this two-can setup, right? We just mount them. They're mounted right at the bottom of that can. There's a hole that uh, they're so they're mounted flush uh, to the bottom of the can. Uh, one of the things that we're, I'm going to ask you to do is actually be careful with how you use off, you know, uh, these off-shelf sensors. You have to correct correctly connect them. And uh, in, in the in the pre-lab, you know, we'll ask you to look at the particular connections that have to be made because you're going to have to hook all this up in the lab and um, and I'll discuss that and again in a separate uh, uh, pre-lab video and and um, using off-the-shelf sensors and and I have three points here just uh, and these are three of the things that we want you to think about when you're using these sensors uh, and really any kind of sensor you know be sure that the range of operation meets the requirements. So in this case, as I mentioned, this is a sensor that we needed that could detect 10 inches of water, so it had to be fairly sensitive. Um, so that's one of the issues that you have to be concerned with. And this refers to kind of to the input of sensor, uh, which is the quantity to be measured. But you also have to worry about the output, and that has to match the output uh, going to, uh, in this case, whatever you're measuring with. You could have a voltmeter, or we're going to be using a uh, the uh, uh, data acquisition system, and that has, a, again, a certain full-scale range. So make sure that you're taking advantage of that uh, and that the 10 inches of water corresponds to a nice full range of output so that you can make good measurements, right? Be aware that sensors can also have many different ways for, for conveying those values. So when you're selecting a sensor, you know, if you want to measure voltage, make sure that you choose one with voltage output. Sometimes uh, um, they might have current output, Sometimes the term of transmitter is, is, is actually used when you refer to current out. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you can have sensors that have frequency out. So make sure that the output voltage, output signal, electrical quantity is something that is in a form that's, uh, that you're prepared to measure. The other thing, so we're going to, I'm going to have, have some pre-lab discussion about, about you reviewing that for these sensors. Make sure also that you understand the power requirements for the sensor. You, know, you have to put power into some sensors and so you should know uh, how much power is required, how much current it'll it'll draw, for example, and whether your power supply is sufficient to power that. We'll talk about that. Um, and of course make sure just that you make the right connections so that you can get the correct signal out uh, uh, from, from, from the sensor. Uh, 